Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome. My name is Resorty, and to you, one and all, I say hello, friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome on this lovely Monday morning here. It's probably a Sunday still where you are. I hope your weekend has gone pretty well, and I'm very glad you decided to be with the, be with, be with here to me today. Very good. I get excited sometimes the words go too fast, and I just get confused and lost. Whichever way, how the heck's it going? Uh, today, friends, we are bound, going back to an old game, an old popular game, an old friendly game. A little game called RimWorld, and boy howdy am I excited to be playing this one once more. We've been away from it for probably, I don't know, two or so months, but definitely time to get back to it and continue a playthrough we started, I don't know, maybe maybe four months ago, it's five months ago, I don't know, way back when we uh, played some RimWorld, we're gonna do some more today in anticipation for a RimWorld DLC coming out on Thursday. So we have a few days, five days or so, uh, to play away through the uh, former playthrough and then on to the brand new one. It should be a good time. Looking forward to getting back to RimWorld. Always like seeing the old friend, inviting him over for a drink. Hey, RimWorld, what's you been up to recently? Oh, what I've been doing? Oh, nothing as interesting as you, I'm sure. That's how it tends to go. Good to see you today, Pepper. Pepper, thank you for the resubscription, my friend. It's good to see you, Axix. Hello, Jim. What is up, H -A -P -A G? Hello, Cortraption and Sakotera and Grimmy and Elisadol and Axix and Freak. Welcome back, Beer Killer. It's good to see you, Amareth. Hello, Wizards. Hello, Steve. Hello, Volo. Hello, Twiz. Hello, everybody. If I missed you, I apologize, but I'm glad that you're all here. Uh, friends, it is such a nice day here in Tokyo. The temperatures have been rising very nicely. Today it will be in the 70s, apparently, which is definitely the warmest it's been so far this year. And uh, yeah, it's getting to the point where we're putting away the winter clothes. We're leaving the windows open overnight. Fresh air is coming in once more. Uh, wiping away all the winter blues and it's just a, it's a great time of year every year spring happens this way of course and every year it feels like the world has come alive again and uh, I wonder I wonder if I'll always be so delighted by that gosh I hope so I've been doing it now for for 40 years and I, I think uh, it could happen for 41 also I'm probably 42 and beyond it's just really great feeling the the nice transition from the cold the dark the sad to the bright the happy, the hopeful, and all the rest. So hopefully my energy on stream is good for you all <laughs> for the next few weeks at least. We'll see, we'll see. It is the last week of teaching. My students had their final exam on Friday, and then just some grading, and then we're on to our summer break. As you know here, our summer break is only two or three weeks long. I think maybe actually a month long now that I think about it, uh, but we'll not be having months and months and months. And so uh, between between uh, now and then, you'll be getting some extra resorty time, maybe some YouTube videos, gosh, uh, such possibilities in the weeks ahead. But glad to have another successful semester done. Check. Very, very pleased about that for sure. Uh, hello to you, Darby Cat. Thanks for the resubscription. Uh, I'm hopeful about the future. Why? The sun will dis disappear tomorrow. The sun will disappear tomorrow. That's right, so many of you are in the United States, uh, and in, in Mexico, in North America, in those parts of the world where tomorrow there's a real big eclipse. Uh, people over on Discord have been showing pictures, people on Discord have been uh, making conversation about this. I hope you're able to see the eclipse tomorrow if you want to. Uh, definitely it's nowhere near happening here, uh, so we'll instead uh, look for pictures on Discord, online, otherwise, but... Uh, I mean, how exciting, how exciting to have these weird moments where we're usually just doing the day-night cycle and then suddenly out of nowhere, the sun disappears. Uh, yesterday, the New York Times had an article on how do animals, uh, non-human animals, react to 
uh, sudden eclipses. It's definitely fascinating. Uh, for some of them, apparently nothing changes. Uh, back in the last big eclipse in 2012, I think, there was a, a study at a number of the major American zoos about how do zoo animals respond to, uh, to eclipses, and they don't seem to care exactly <laughs> uh, on the whole, but you know, other ones might try to try to go to sleep over the course of the eclipse. Uh, some of them might just freeze, being very confused. Uh, at, at least the humans who know, the, who knows what is going on, who know what's going on, there we go. The humans who know what's going on uh, will surely smile in delight and, and be amazed at the wonder of it all. So yes, I hope it's the case that you enjoy seeing the eclipse if you get to do so. Hello, Marks! You didn't get a lot of sleep last night and you blame me. Hey, Marks, congratulations again on winning the Millennia Key Giveaway. I'm very glad that you enjoyed playing some Millennia. And yeah, it's a game, if you're not careful, it will just keep you awake forever and ever. One more turn, one more turn. Uh, we did finish our Millennia playthrough last week. We achieved two out of the four victory stages of the game. And I gotta say, right now, the victory stages are not super well fleshed out. Uh, or at least in the difficulty we were playing it, it was not that challenging. Um, we will play at higher difficulty next time in Millennia, but for right now it was just a, you know, you get to the end, you push the end turn button a few times in a row, you win, woo! Uh, but definitely a fun game through and through. I really enjoyed it, and I am, uh, yeah, I think it's it's now a case that Civ might have a worthy competitor. Uh, coming out of the the Paradox Development Studio. Uh, as mentioned many times before, uh, in the past, I don't know, two, three years, it seems like Paradox is attempting to launch challengers to many other franchises out there. You got the Civ, you got the Paradox um, Sims, you got the Paradox Satisfactory coming out pretty soon. Uh, and I'm hopeful that all of these uh, do provide some good competition for those games that are so successful because, what, competition breeds innovation or at least gives gamers more choices, perhaps. But uh, I think that Millennia especially has succeeded in showing how one can have a Civ-like game that's importantly different. So, fingers crossed that this one will actually continue being developed. Uh, last I looked, they had about 3,000 people still playing it, which, while not anywhere near as many as Stiv, is still, is Civ is still a decent number of folks. So, who knows, who knows, who knows. Whichever way, I'll, I'll definitely check it out again when it comes out uh, in, in newer releases, when it gets additional patches and DLCs and so on, and... I look forward to it. Should be good. All right, what do I have for you? I have some pictures for you, friends. It is a Monday, and so yesterday I took the day off and things got done. Oh, I should mention before that, of course, Saturday night, watch some Wrexham football. Wrexham, one, two to one. It was a, what's the word for it? A, a, a gritty match, we'll call it. Uh, a very physical match. Wrexham nearly lost. <laughs> it was it was looking pretty, pretty rough in a couple places. Um, that said, in like the 93rd minute or something, uh, Wrexham tied it up. Or Wrexham went ahead, and that was great. Uh, it shouldn't be this close, though, because Wrexham is in second place. Or Wrexham are in second place. And the team they were against, Colchester, is in 22nd place in the league. Numbers mean nothing. It all comes down to the game at hand. But yeah, Wrexham won. Hooray. There are four matches left this season uh, before you all don't have to hear about my Wrexham obsession anymore uh, for a while at least. But yes, big win. Uh, solidly in second place. Uh, if they win the next two matches, I believe they definitely get promoted. Uh, to League One. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Hello, Klaus. This Canada's interesting. We played this game before. Uh, what game is this again? Oh, uh, Rhyme World? Rhyme World? I don't think I've played Rhyme World before. Now, I'll need some help with uh, learning this game. I need some suggestions, any good, but I've heard some okay things about it at least. Possibly, possibly. Must cough. Even though it's nice outside, it is getting a little allergy horrific in here, I believe. Not as bad as Noms. Poor Noms. This weekend has just been endless disease symptoms, uh, endless allergy symptoms, and she's still refusing to go to the doctor to get prescription medicine. But I myself, I myself am not that bad yet, but I will go to the doctor if it gets much worse, because I don't want to be coughing and sneezing all throughout stream. That wouldn't be good for anybody. Right. That said, though, I wish to share some pictures with you. Uh, first things first, it is time for us to update the Fritz word picture. Hello, Fritz. So that was last week's Fritz looking very silly picture. Turned upside down with a little snaggle tooth sticking out uh, at relaxation. 
You all will like it when there's a picture of Fritz that is not uh, Fritz being a good boy. Instead, you all want Fritz being a shameful, shameful kid. This is bad boy Fritz, who's managed to find his way to the carrot water. <laughs> As I said last week, uh, Fritz very much likes water that has dirt in it, and I don't know why that is. And so that's my wife's little carrot plant uh, that she had floating inside of a saucer of water, and uh, yeah, Fritz decided he wanted that water and so snuck up onto the table and instead of scaring him away and saying, no bad boy, no bad boy, uh, she instead took a picture for you all. That's where this fits uh, the hierarchy of needs in our, uh, our home, is first and foremost amuse the Twitch viewers, and then and only then tell the cat he's doing a bad job. <laughs> Hello to you, hit people guy, how's it going? Thank you for the resubscription, HPG. You're really allergic to pollen. I feel this spring be breathtaking. This is a joke. <laughs> HPG, thank you for marking your, your your comments as this one's a joke. So I know not to be confused, but that's good. Breathtaking pollen. If you're actually allergic, I hope it goes okay. Whichever way, thank you so much for the generous resubscription. I appreciate it. Yeah. One of these days I'll get a picture of Fritz drinking the water from his proper water bowl, but not today, not today. Is a very naughty kitty for sure. Uh, the other photos we have relate to what weekend it is here in Tokyo. Uh, as you know, there are many holiday seasons all year long. Uh, this past weekend was the high point of a holiday that is not an official calendar holiday, but is instead an equally important part of the Japanese year. And that is, as I mentioned previously, Hanami. That's the wrong window. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Hanami, which is the flower viewing season. So let's start with this picture right here. Uh, Noms took this one for you all. That's not being visible. There it is. Noms took that one for you all. It is a photo taken outside of the Imperial um, Palace. Uh, there's the moat there. There are the flowers there. Uh, so many happy people in their happy boats, happily uh, scooting about to see this and that. As you see, the bright white flowers, the cherry blossom, a little pink in that also. It's just a joyful thing to go underneath and to watch the, uh, the blossoms fall. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Noms and I have talked about whether we want to go take one of those boats ourselves. She thinks it's too funny, though, if we do so, because I'm significantly heavier than she is, and so the boat bends to one side and then begins listing that direction also. <laughs> uh, that is the moat, yes, that is the Emperor's moat right there. Uh, the Emperor's on the right-hand side, up a little bit. That's how it goes. Hello, Aardvark! How would I say Rimworld compares to Dwarf Fortress, not to interrupt the combo? Hey, no worries. Uh, Rimworld's a much more approachable Dwarf Fortress. Um, they are similar games in that you make a colony and have that colony uh, survive and thrive or no uh, based on the choices you make and the responses from the world around you. Uh, Rimworld's storyline is much easier to follow than Dwarf Fortresses for the new player especially. Uh, it's also prettier, so you can tell it's happening more easily. Um, you also have more direct control of your your uh, colonists slash dwarves. So if you're a new player trying to decide which one you want to play, I think Rimworld is probably a better first step in. Uh, Dwarf Fortress ultimately has more complexity, but um, I'm a fan of both of them for sure. For sure. All right. To get this photo for you, though, whoa, whoa, whoa prettier? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I, I think, objectively speaking, if we go ask the the man on the street, uh, which is a more attractive game, Rimworld or Dwarf Fortress, I don't want to say, but I have a suspicion. I will go do some, uh, I will go do some uh, interviews of random Japanese people. All right, so to get this photo for you, Noms had to do some careful camera work. Uh, you'll see many photos like this throughout Japan, and you'll say, oh, I want to go be a tourist there. It looks so beautiful, so wide open, so free. And then you will discover, to take that photo, she had to somehow avoid all of that. <laughs> so there's this tremendous line, this tremendous line of people wanting to go take their boat rides. 
and, and Nanta to squeeze her way through that, take a photo alongside the other uh, river. Uh, but this is something that is absolutely true about Japan that we did not know until we got here. Namely, on the whole, people in Tokyo do not mind standing in very, 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 very long lines. Uh, I believe that Nam said the line there said it was three hours uh, to start uh, the line to the point where you get a turn on the boats. Three hours! Absolute ridiculousness. But there you go, your daily line of Japanese people. Cyber Oracle, hello my friend. Over on Discord we've seen Cyber Oracles off camping in a little adorable little camper thing. Uh, getting ready to see the eclipse. So hope it's good for you my friend. Hopefully the world does not end. Um, Alright, we have a couple other little photos for you of similar situations. Uh, this is on the walk back towards our house. So, um, yeah, all throughout Japan right now, or at least all throughout Tokyo right now, there are these scenes where these trees, which often are just bare uh, branches, are totally in bloom now. And you see the large buildings of Tokyo behind and in front this burst of nature. And all throughout the city, uh, people were set up on little picnic blankets underneath, uh, on, on benches. Some people had, like, brought their f dining room table outside <laughs> to sit under it. Uh, just, like, a joyful period when people get outside after time in the, uh, in the winter. And I absolutely understand why people get so excited over the cherry blossoms, especially here in Tokyo. Because generally speaking, everything is so concrete, so built up. There's not a lot of natural beauty. Uh, but then suddenly, one weekend, they all appear, and it's great. Um, Nam's went ahead and took you all a zoomed-in picture of the same. And so you can see more closely what these things look like. And that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of all it is, right? At some level, I'm just going on about, gosh, aren't flowers beautiful? But you know what? Gosh, aren't flowers beautiful? And for me, I think it's much more than just the beauty of the individual blossom, uh, but instead the beauty of what it does to the city. Uh, for a very brief period, everything seems A-OK -okay all right in the world. So, there you go. There you go. Let me grab a jacket. <laughs> The key to getting empty panorama shops, careful cropping, yes. None of these photos are edited. Uh, Noms apparently use some kind of filters when uploading them to her friends on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, but for you all, you get the raw deal. I'm never going to take away the authentic experience of the flowers from you. <laughs> anyway, those are the weekend photos. Uh, yesterday for me was a little bit more grading. A little bit more reading. Uh, I got another book started now. I'm looking through a uh, Thomas Pynchon book, uh, Gravity's Rainbow. It's one that I picked up a long time ago and been meaning to read. Another one of these really, uh, really weird, really big books that I've been reading recently. Uh, I'll offer some feedback on it over on the Discord as usual. Uh, thank you to everyone who's been telling me about the books you've been reading. I do enjoy hearing our little book club discussions. Uh, even if we often have not read the same books, it's still fun to learn what books are happening throughout your world. Anyway, I think that is the story time completed. I think that's all I got. I know we have one more RimWorld DLC update coming in the next few days. I don't know when it's coming exactly, but at some point between now and Thursday, uh, but yeah, between now and Thursday, uh, we should get one more update about the new RimWorld DLC. I'm considering ignoring it. We have read through all of the DLC uh, uh, patch notes, I guess, uh, DLC updates, however you want to call them, uh, just to get a sense of what's coming. I now kind of wish I hadn't done that because my senses have already formed an opinion about the DLC instead of just playing through it and seeing what is going on. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll play it on Thursday either way, though, and we'll have a good time. The question just be, you know, when it comes to ranking all of the DLCs for RimWorld in terms of best to worst, where will Anomaly go? I'm leaning in one direction a little bit, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, hey, Garrett, you love Inherent Vice uh, movie, but pinching with over your head in print. Uh, I really enjoyed The Crying of Lot 49. Uh, I think it's probably the best one to start with. Uh, if you're a new reader to Pynchon who's confused. That said, uh, like so many of other authors we've been discussing recently, he is someone who does not really care if he's understood. He has a product he's doing, and that is just... That is just that, right? De definitely someone who, who has the kind of writing he wants to do, and if it works out, great, and if not, great. He's doing it largely for himself, or at least that's a story he seems to tell. 
Uh, I was recently reading uh, one of William Gaddis's speeches. He gave a speech to the National Book Award Committee, uh, in which he talked about, you know, why is there such a curiosity about what the writer is trying to do? Why can't the writing just stay on its own and be there for itself? Um, everyone's always asking me, why did you write it this way? What does this mean to you? No, 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 just let the writing stand. And I realized that I did that. When I first started reading Gaddis's text, I immediately pulled up the Wikipedia, like, William Gaddis, who is he? Hmm, very interesting. Um, I think I think today, with access to that kind of information about everyone, you know, who is this author? Who is this actor? Why does the singer sing this way? We have a harder and harder time just attending to the output without worrying about the production conditions uh, under which it was made. So, hard to say. Hey, else no, uh, I'd hate to be an Elden Ring streamer who's making hours of content speculating on DLC from one trailer. Um, so last RimWorld DLC, I s spent, I think, two hours talking through everything I saw on one image of the RimWorld DLC. It was it was pretty, pretty silly fun. Um, that said, I was entirely wrong about the majority of my guesses, which was very dispiriting. Spent so that much time and just being mistaken through and through, so... Eh, maybe you'll try it again in the future, but probably not. Hello, Game Urchin! It's good seeing you! Hello, everyone! Let's play some RimWorld! I think it's time to get into our RimWorld to get back to uh, the game we played so very much once upon a time. Uh, I started thinking, as I was beginning to uh, consider today's stream, I began thinking, do I remember how to play this game? Do I recall what we were trying to do, or will it all kind of just fall apart all at once? And it's okay if it does, I suppose. We'll be ready for Thursday more easily, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping we remember how this thing is going. This playthrough is called Let's Explore with Mr. Science and Timmy. It's a permanent playthrough. It was last played on the uh, 27th of January, so it has been has been about three, two and a half, three months since then. So let's get to it and see what's what. Um, mods mismatch. Huh. Oh, we need these mods. We absolutely need these mods to have uh, sailboats to get over the seas. So let me go ahead and load these mods in. And I actually do not know why they're not active. Some mods are unavailable, need to be installed. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, just a moment there. Hello, Klaus. If Paradox decides to make a RimWorld like, what would I do with myself? <laughs> um, that's a fine question. That's a, that's a fine question. What would I do with myself if, if RimWorld and Paradox became one? I'd be just very, very, very confused. Very, very confused because, yeah, because, because RimWorld is its own special thing, and there is no competing with it. There's only RimWorld and inferior games that look like RimWorld. That's my story. Uh, Garrett, thank you so much for the $5 tip. I'm glad you're enjoying chit-chatting about this and that with me. Hopefully you enjoy uh, hanging out and talking about books occasionally. Thank you, Garrett, for your kindness all the way. Well, <clears throat> well, um, yeah, maybe there was an update to the game that turned off all of the mods. Oh, someone did not plan for this at all. Uh, let's see here. Can I get the Steam Store thing here? Uh, okay, can you see that? Oh, you can see nothing. I've been talking the whole time and you can see nothing. That's great. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. All right. Why is this not capturing correctly? Huh. Huh. Yeah, it's possible the mods are not going to work, unfortunately. And that would be some problems. All right, so number one, why are you not capturing correctly? Well, this will work just fine. Cool. But you get mods from Workshop, it brings up this Steam thing. Fine. So we can see which mods I currently have installed. Uh, uh, is it my favorites? No, I have no favorites. That's how it goes. Hey, friends, the first ad break is coming in. You're, all you're going to miss is me pushing buttons and being confused about why it's not working. Also, total playtime, 1,955 hours. Haven't made 2,000 yet. Have I even begun learning the game? Oh, my goodness. Um. Okay, is there a way to see what I already have installed here? That's what I actually need to figure out. So, my favorites, no, followed authors? They don't follow anybody, certainly. All right, here's the way to do it, then. If we go into the game... Oh, it says downloading dot, 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 dot. 
So it knows what it's looking for, but it's just downloading dot, 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 dot. Huh. Huh. Well, cat. We try to load it. Harmony is a big one that everybody uses. I go to browse, then drop down, click subscribe. Okay, we'll try that. Uh, browse. Subscribed items. Thank you, hero. Here we go. Here we go. Last update on March 24th. That's all pretty recently. Yeah, these are all the things we need to get back again. That's correct. And are we downloading dot, 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 dot? Uh, what happens if I unsubscribe and then resubscribe to these? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this to all these. And then when that's done, we will reload the game and see what happens. Try verifying files. Okay, I will do this first, and then I will try that. Maybe we won't play RimWorld after all. <laughs> Maybe, like you were saying, it's time for Backpack Battles. Or perhaps a little game known as... Uh, what else do we play sometimes? We can play uh, some... How was that awful game? I shouldn't say that. No, no, no. There, there was a game I played recently that I never want to play again. I forgot what it was, though. Check the Steam Clash show with mods are actually downloading. Okay, I can do that also. <laughs> Push the escape key, Resorty. The escape key. Oh, we don't need Christmas hats this time. That's okay. Uh, actually, the majority of them not actually using. Deprecated fork. Um, Harmony we definitely need. Okay. Yeah, you go in. Maybe we don't need high-tech lab coats so much longer. Should lab coats are in the game. It's true. The new update includes lab coats in the base game. I've used a mod for this for a very, very long time. All right, I have remarked everything. I'm now going to close this and verify the old game cache. So that is uh, here. Welcome to Resorty's Steam page. Is it in installed files? Ah, uh, here we go. We're now verifying. So far, so good. Uh, everything has been validated. Awesome. Now restart the game. Place your bets now. There's such anticipation, such hope, such desire. Ah, uh, let's see. Huh. 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 <laughs> so. So. All right, I got an idea. Uh, let's see here. Where's my sling? Good, good. Uh. Reddit, RimWorld, download mods ellipses. Nope. Make sure to turn it on and off again. I could definitely try that. <laughs> the Japanese teeth sucking sound. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Did I blow on the cartridge yet? Just just jiggle it. Just jiggle it around. It'll be fine. Well, that's not good. Um, so honestly, I'm not sure what to do. We, we can just load the save as it is. Um, I don't recall if we're on land in a place we can keep marching or if we need the water. There's nothing else I absolutely need for this playthrough, I'm fairly sure. So let's load it and see what happens. What's the worst that could probably possibly occur? <sighs> Thank you for hanging out with me during this part. Hey, apparently we had a flu. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Pass Resorty. So apparently someone is not feeling terribly well in the base. It was a big enough concern that uh, I left a note to myself about it. Very good, very good, very good. So where are we currently? Oh, it feels good to be back to RimWorld. It feels real good. 
Okay. So we've just landed here. Uh, you'll recall this playthrough started over here, I think. Mm, over... Over... Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's see if I can... Hey, Mr. Bleez, it's good to see you, Bleez. How's it going? So I know we stopped... Uh, I know nothing anymore. Uh, we are here. So we know we stopped to the north of here. Oh no, are the, the prior bases all long? Are all, all gone, rather? Oh no, if the old bases are gone, you're just gonna have to believe me we started somewhere else. <laughs> this whole playthrough means nothing if it's just like, I swear, we didn't start here. <laughs> I, I know we stopped here. Oh, we did, okay. Here are two, here are two of them. So we have existed previously. Um, if we continue along looking for other white debris. Mm, should have made a map and like drawn a red line as we went. Because I'm nearly sure we started in this area. Well, whichever way. We have gone places. Things are good. Let's head back and see what is what. So a worry that someone has the flu. Who is that? Okay, so unnamed Comet definitely has the flu. It's real, real close to being a problem. Okay. Um, Rogbeard also has the flu. It is also real, real close to being a big problem. And then Jack has the flu. It's actually also really a big problem, possibly. So three in a row that uh, need some real help here. Let me go ahead and see who our doctors are. I have absolutely no idea. Hey, it's Mr. Science. Okay, we should probably reacquaint ourselves with the cast of this playthrough. We started with two people, uh, Mr. Science and little Timmy. Uh, Mr. Science is our best all-arounder. He's quite smart, but quite lazy and all the rest. Um, uh, no, <laughs> you can see when I alt-tab out now because I'll be being captured. I alt-tab out to stop some music in the background. Uh, yeah, so annoying, annoying, annoying. But then uh, there's little Timmy himself. Little Timmy's very good at shooting now. He's kind. He's optimistic. He's staying with it. And then I have Kibbs. Uh, Kibbs, our body purist, who is missing many, many body parts and has a bit of dementia. Uh, poor Kibbs, I believe, is a body purist who lost a body part in the first or second fight uh, of this playthrough. It's horrible. Uh, Comet's unwell. Comet is also very good at shooting. Cyber Oracle, top constructor and miner. Love that. Rog, very strong at melee and moves slowly. Uh, Politsia, fairly strong at melee also. Jack, the same. So three pretty strong meleeers. Is this the game where Timmy almost killed himself? I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. What did he do exactly? <laughs> I don't recall. Ah, uh, so what I need to do for sure is ensure that these three people stay in bed no matter what. And make sure that there's some doctor ready to tend to them immediately. And we'll need to see if we have good medicine. Uh, so we do have a couple of industrial medicine and quite a few of the nice green stuff too. So what level of medicine are they set up to get? That is in a sign. Uh, I'm going to make the ones who have this disease, get the better quality medicine if we can. Good. Good to good. Um, how long have you been here, I wonder? I didn't write that down, unfortunately, so it's really possible we're supposed to be leaving fairly soon. I do see a lot of blood on the ground, after all. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Let's see. It is currently the year... 5504, been on the road in total for 250 days. We have quite a bit of food. I think this is normally the call when we move, is how much food do we have for the next move. So let's try and save some more, beyond what we have right now. All right. We appear to have some guns in the north here. That is a lovely thing. And they will protect that direction. We have guns in this direction also. We have no guns in the south. We do have a tremendous number of, of traps. Go check the VOD. Check the VOD. The VOD knows all. It's okay. After three months away from the game, I'm okay with taking some time to figure it out and maybe take a little bit too long staying in one place. Uh, lots of dirtiness happening inside of my central room there. Um, also, why are these doors closed? 
Okay, I see we have air conditioning units here. Outside is 40 degrees. Inside is 24. So, how is this room being cooled? It's being cooled from the cooler here, I guess. So, I guess I have two separate cooling areas. The bedrooms and then everything else. Uh, another cooler would probably help with that. So, let's go ahead and do that. Do I have components? I do. I have two of them. I have seven, 18 of them, actually. Even more. Uh, so, I'd like to add additional cooling, cooling to this room in particular. There's no way to pl place this... Uh, AC unit so it goes directly into that room. So I'll do one of these instead. That's an airlock. We actually don't want to do anything with that. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of putting a cooling unit here, but if I do that, it'll let uh, warmer air into our lovely little freezer here, which is actually at 5 degrees Celsius right now. Let's encold that by trying to aim to negative 20 instead. Cool, we'll see how it goes. Behind the elephants. Yes, there's this one here, which is getting very cold. Hiding near the elephants, of course. <laughs> All right, I'm seeing that there's a lot of dark places. I'm seeing a lot of unfloored uh, areas. Where are we making stones here? Do we have any stones made? We have 20 granite blocks. All right, let's go ahead and mark the floor here. We made a little bit more attractive with granite blocks. Again, behaving like we're staying here long term. Let's talk about when we leave, where we'd like to go next. So we just landed here. I believe I was intending to land into boats again or load into boats again and head up and around this way. But because of mod problems, we now have no boats. So we're going to have to march our way through this arid shrubland, I suppose. How long does it take to get from here to that woodland over here? Only five days. Uh, Move at average speed, etc. If I want to go a little bit farther, from here to, we'll say, the Emu Hip Bog. Oh man, without both, we had some real problems. Yeah, without both, there's no way across, is there? Huh. 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 Okay, maybe I can find some other mod that will help me get across one tile of water. Or, is there a way in dev mode to change this into a land bridge? I've never used de uh, dev mode to uh, change the world map, but I bet it is possible to do so. And then we can continue on. Okay, so our goal is to get from here down to here and then mess with dev mode. Except for this is impassable. That kind of mountain cannot be passed ever, ever. So possibly we'll change two parts with dev mode. <laughs> um, Y'all are friendly, correct? Uh, negative 80 of friendship there. That's no good. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. I apologize. Let me uh, fix this real quick. Uh, 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 where's Resorty? Here he is. We go roughly here while playing this game. And they'll move a little follower notification over also. Good. And we flip the camera. I want to see why the game is not capturing correctly. I don't want you all to see the whole display there. Uh, it's capturing right now. Very good. Go down slightly. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Get my little shelf there. You know, elf on the shelf. There's Resorty on the. I'm sure there's a joke that would work with that. Uh -uh, uh -uh. All better. All better there. All right, so for right now we have, I think, what, 50 food or so saved up, which is enough for maybe five or so days. So we could go ahead and move right now if we want to. I think we're going to say after the flu that we're currently suffering, uh, we'll then prepare to move, I do believe. Assuming everyone lives through it just fine. Mm. Your health is... Minor still, you can be treated in six hours. Immunity is catching up. On Jack, immunity is not catching up. Unnamed Comet has caught up. So Jack is the only issue here. We'll see. Oh, Candace, I look like someone who owns a beagle. 
<laughs> That's one of the more unusual <laughs> recent greetings. Hello, streamer. You look like someone who owns a beagle. I have no dogs. Um, yeah, I'm not really a dog person in general. I don't want to have to come home and let them out, to be honest, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, because of these three uh, illnesses here are all halves of relationships, we have three people who are currently sleeping on the floor. Uh, do I have wood anywhere? Where would I have put a word, wood, word, a wood stockpile? Uh, this is a desert, so answer almost certainly no, I do not, which means it's time to make a bed out of anything else. Uh, we do have these bed rolls. Let's go ahead and throw these down right now just to give people a place to sleep instead of the floor. So two. Yeah, we'll need one more. One of the good quality ones. And this way everyone can stay in, uh, take care of their sweeties. That's all we ever want. Oh, they have to move these first. <laughs> Why are you all not moving? Dogs require work and attention. Yeah, and I have no problem with dogs. Like, I don't, I don't like dogs that bark a lot. I don't like dogs that are mean, of course. But if someone is able to deal with that kind of thing, be able to deal with dogs that are a little yappy, perhaps, that's all cool. I think what I have trouble with, though, is just the further need to care for the animal and give up my time for the animal. Fundamentally, I'm a selfish person, and so I'm unwilling to give up my time for anyone but me. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Just jokes. Perfect tend on old Jack there. Old Jack's flu is tend as well as possible, and so immunity will now catch the flu, and so Jack may not die this time. Fantastic. All right. Other things I was probably working on when we last played this game. Well, certainly getting more defenses to the south. Um, this southern area here is... Defended only by traps. The northern area and eastern area have no traps at all. Hey, Game Merchant, you found the VOD for this playthrough. Do you want to know what my uh, new leave-by date is? I'd love to know when we got here. If you have that pulled up, Game Merchant, I'd love to know. I'd like to leave pretty soon, but I recognize also that I uh, am kind of just deciding on that for no good reason, other than I want to start a fresh base so I know what the heck is going on. A group of travelers are coming by. Hello, travelers. Your name is Zigobia. Your name is Antelope, and Askri, and Banvas. They have no reason to spend time with me. They're just passing on through. Hmm. We arrived at September 7th, 5503. Okay, so we have been here more than two months, so it is time to go once the diseases have been dealt with. Awesome, thank you for that. So we are ready to go when the people are free of flu. That's going to be... A few more days still, but they all will live, so we are feeling okay about that. Um, how best to prepare for the leaving then, outside of just making more food? Making medicine would be good. Um, we do have drug production marked, and we haven't yet looked for medicine production, so we got to get both of those done. As of right now, who is my researcher? It's Mr. Science. However, he's also responsible for cooking. And I believe there's nigh infinite cooking to do because of our desire to have more and more and more pack survival meals. So who else cooks pretty well right now? Uh, Cyber Oracle does uh, at a six. Unfortunately, they have eight to get the um, yeah, you have eight to get the pack survival meals made. So Cyber Oracle, you can do other things instead. Hey, Doctor Nixum, thanks for the resubscription. How's it going, my friend? Hope you're having a good one. Thanks for your kindness. Uh, two quadrants, a good turnaround. It is, it is. Uh, I think I was probably ready to go at the end of last stream, but then the flus came and kind of slowed us down a little bit. And that's all right. Thinking of fighting this uh, this cougar. Oh, it's named. It's ours. <laughs> Thinking about killing our pets. So I was a bit concerned about why there was a, a cougar near to my home here. Uh, ends up being a friend named Jackcraft. Hello, Jackcraft. <laughs> A fully trained, advanced trainability animal. Just thinking about killing it. That's good. Uh, down to the south, a bit of spaceship felt. So we'll go and take that apart and get some additional components. 
Uh, looking like everyone has on military grade helmets. I believe everyone also has on flak vests at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone else could do the research then instead of uh, Mr. Science. Uh, Kibbs, our best grower, is also good at research. Politsia, who has no special job other than moving stuff around, could help with that as well. So Politsia, I'm going to say, let's just have you get to researching and get rid of the hauling job for right now. That'll help us gradually learn how, how science works. So our research table is right here in this very sad little corner there. And what is its overall research speed? Uh, 74%. It's down a little bit because the room is not terribly clean. And we've already researched upgraded. No, we've not researched upgraded research to bench. So at some point, we'll research that also. That will be necessary to research to get us into medicine production. So we need to do both of those at some point. But next base, next base for all of that. Uh, having no hauler means that Mr. Science has to haul their own food back and forth. And I'm not seeing much in the way of cleaning happening either. So a whole bunch of people are job one cleaning. Uh, of them, only Cyber Oracle is really job one cleaning. And there you go. There you go, Cyber Oracle. Keeping the world nice and beautiful. Uh, I'm still trying to decide on the new playthrough we're starting on Thursday, whether we should do a playthrough with all of the DLC or just the new one. Do you all have any sense of what you're going to do for your first playthroughs of Anomaly if you're playing the game also? Or if you decide instead that uh, you're not playing Anomaly until you've seen it played, or not by Anomaly ever. I know for some of you, Anomaly is just not looking appealing even a little bit. I'd love to know, though, what kind of playthroughs you have planned out for the future with that tremendous amount of spookiness. Now, what is this? Unfinished Heavy SMG. So Jack is currently putting weapons together. Heavy SMG fires a whole bunch of bullets for fairly fast leveling up. But Jack is currently stuck in bed. For Anomaly, you'll be watching a streamer called Resorty play it. Oh, is that the goal here? Is that the, the ambition? Watch Resorty play it? Mmm, I, I guess you could. I guess you could. You're immediately going to start an I Want a Library playthrough? Wait, but that's my playthrough. You can't uh, have a library playthrough. That's what I do. Uh, Mr. Science went to bed instead of tending to these sick people. So we'll fix that right quick. And then you may go back to sleep again. Uh, so over the past few days, Jack had very good tending. So he's now 2% above on immunity to flu. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we have a caravan spot? In thinking about leaving, I want to make sure we have a place set up to get us on the road fairly easily. I don't see one, though. So let me make one over here. Uh, caravan spot right here and let people carry the items out that direction over and over again 1000 books 1000 cats yeah you're, you're not necessarily wrong about that initially i want to do not say 1000 books but as many books as possible we're playing as a character who's looking to uh catalog all of the knowledge of this place uh despite the horrors of it all it doesn't feel like your RimWorld, you're skipping the DLC. Game Merchant, I largely agree with you. If I were not a streamer, I would not be playing this DLC, almost certainly. 1,000 cats, a lot of food. It is real risk. Have you not seen it? I didn't make a YouTube video of it. I should have done so. We have had 1,000 cats uh, one time, and it was so, 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 so stupid. <laughs> it was a base that existed for no purpose other than growing hay grass, killing animals, and making them into... Uh, making them into kibble. And uh, yeah, we got to like 1300, I believe, before it fell apart. But it was, it was a, I think, one of the more notable playthroughs of all time for us. It was a really, really good time. <laughs> all right, Jack, you're gonna live, right? You're gonna live for sure. Pull it, see you, you're just hanging out there. Yeah. Starvation, oh no, unnamed <laughs> Collins is not well. They popped out of bed though. They're getting some food. Sorry, unnamed Comet, rather. Do we kill human animals at one time? I don't remember if we ended up uh, feeding... We must have. We must have fed human flesh to the uh, to the cats. Because there's no way I would have said, uh, my morals, in order to avoid chopping up um, raiders when feeding the cats. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what we did, but... 
All right, look here, video game. Look here, video game. One of our colonists has gotten sick from the flu. Ensure you have a medical bed to doctor. Make sure to get proper treatment. Spend as much time in bed as possible. Mr. Science has become unwell. Mr. Science, you're our doctor. You know you should be washing your hands. All right, so Mr. Science, to whom are you married? To Rog. All right, so you... Can only one person at a time be assigned to a medical bed? I believe that's true, actually. So now we have a slight problem, which is to say, my number one doctor is now also sickly. Number two doctor is Mr. Timmy. Little Timmy on the job. Someone needs treatment right now. That is treatment needed on Rock, who is getting out of bed to do it. Nope, 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 nope. Back you go. I said we're going to leave after the um, tuple can chair, but when I right click, Rog is now standing up. If I right click and stay there, okay, we are good. We're absolutely good. For some reason, it was just showing they wouldn't both fit, but they did both fit. Thanks for catching that. Rog's up again. <laughs> Rog's having a bad day. Wants some. Uh, Want some recreation time. Uh, Rog's gonna go stand outside in the pile of steel and just hunk some these, uh, steel pieces at a wood piece. Don't you break that. Don't you break that. I really was planning to leave before uh, another flu started. We're playing as Randy Random, and so it's possible to have a lot of very strange outcomes before we get on the road, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna stay here too long. Uh, also, also, we're no longer making any um, pack survival meals. So, I need someone else to work on making simple meals instead. And anybody's allowed to do so. Mr. Science was our only cook previously. So, we need someone else to help with that. Uh, Cyber Oracle, I know you're in charge of cleaning, but I need you to now get on to cooking also. I'm actually going to order you to cook for a while because we have no normal food. Rog? Rog. Back to sleep and go. Timmy is still tending to everyone. You can do it, Timmy. How long is his last attack, I wonder? I know we're playing as Randy Random, so it could happen at any point whatsoever. It has been a while since we've been raided. Yeah, last thing that happened was a marriage. And this base value never climbed quite as high as prior bases. Uh, partially because it's a desert, so there's not that much space to, to grow big fields and so on. We also never built a full wall. Um, also, there's probably been a lot of time fields being healed over and over and over again. All right, Jack. You're fine. Rog, you're fine. Comets, fine. Science, just getting started. I might put Mr. Science into a... Uh, into a cart and drag him along to the next base. I might, I might, I might. All right, we see that hauling is not really happening. Cyber Oracle has plenty of food now, so we can stop endlessly making that. Uh, when the initial three are healed up, <clears throat> we will get on the road. And if Mr. Science dies of infection on the road, it's what the gods wanted. This wandering elephant is mine. His name is Hit Peoplefent. What animals are mine, actually? So we have one chicken <clears throat> with a baby goat. So all of the goats are named after uh, Marvel superheroes, it looks like. The baby goat is named after nothing, though, which means the baby goat I probably do not want to care for long term. But in the short run, let's see if we can come up with another name of a Marvel, super, Marvel superhero. We have Ant-Man, the Hulk, Hawkeye, Captain um, America, presumably, uh, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Deadpool. Uh, we need another um, Marvel superhero who is not Iron Man. I considered saying uh, Cyclops, but I know it upset some of you if I do that. Can't upset you all. Thor? Thor worked. I think Thor may have died before, but the idea of a baby Thor is absolutely perfect. Lovely. Good luck, Lore. Grow big and strong. 
Wolverine. Oh wait, are X Men also Marvel characters? <laughs> I'm sorry. My my knowledge of, of uh, comic books is lacking, to put it mildly. Uh, Mr. Science is set up to get up and do things before staying in bed. Gotta stay in bed, brother. Gotta stay in bed. Plus, so we can use all of the names of the uh, of the ex-people. That'll be good. Uh, if we were staying here long term, what would I be trying to do next? Uh, I'd probably be trying to put additional guns down this way. Um... I really don't want to stay here long term, though, so I'm going to refuse to do that. There are hauling elephants here. We currently have two large hauling animals, the mufflos, and then one smaller hauling alpaca. I'd like to see if we can get one elephant to join our team. So, uh, elephants do not mind people trying to uh, recruit them. Even if you screw up, they don't care at all. So there's one 32-year-old woman there. Woman, I'm sorry, it's a strange word for it. <laughs> Female, a six-year-old. We then also have a 21-year-old and a 20-year-old. I think a six-year-old wants to go to adventures. So the quality needed in handling to have an elephant join is seven. Of our animal handlers, who's the top? It's unnamed Comet with a 13. All right, Comet, when you're healed up, you'll come... Uh, Say hello to that little elephant. We have a bunch of items here I don't care about. Uh, things like these um, bows. No idea why they're there. Uh, we'll be eventually getting somewhere we can trade, and I'll sell those off. I want to check the mountains around the map to see if any of them have minerals I'd still like to harvest. I believe this is a fairly non-mountainous area, so... Eh, I got some steel. Got some components. We could go into our first ancient danger of the playthrough. As long as we're not all sick, I think we'd probably win. So, sure, let's make that our goal for this map. Uh, after the flu is done, or maybe even while the flu is happening, we'll fight our way into an ancient danger and see what we find. Uh, we do have a pile of granite blocks. They can be used for absolutely whatever. And so we're going to set up a wall down here. I'll probably also bring out some of our guns to help us with this. Not enough stored. One second. Oh, it's not stored because they're sitting on the floor instead of being on a shelf or inside of a storage area. Uh, the rights to the X-Men are not owned by Disney's. Now, maybe they are. Okay. Okay. Medical emergency! Wee-oo, wee-oo. Extreme flu. 87 immunity, 83 flu. Also currently starving. Timmy on the job. Don't you worry. No emergency needed. Uh, so eventually we're going to see an X-Men and Avengers movie, is what I'm hearing. I look forward to it. Alright, I guess we're just going to fight at that kind of distance. Uh, there's a possibility of enemies then using a, a doorway as cover to fire on us. They wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare. Huh. Mm. Like I said, let's bring some turrets down also. One there, and one here. Cool. Probably bring some traps also. We'll see, we'll see. What if I wall in the geothermal vent with the Ancient Danger? <laughs> and use <laughs> use the geothermal vent to cook the Ancient Danger. Um, so that would work if there are humanoids inside. Um, or insects, I guess. But it would not if there are robot people. I appreciate the idea of some shenanigans like that. Um... I'm not sure we could get out it in time. Yeah, I'm not sure how long it would take to heat up also. While that would be hilarious, I'm trying to fight this thing, honestly, I suspect. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, Deadpool 3 is coming this summer from the Mar uh, Marvel Smack Universe, and Wolverine is joining him. Awesome! I'm hoping there are also some players from Wrexham who will be in the uh, uh, Deadpool 3 movie, or lots of references to English football. That's all I need in my life, for sure. Hello, Rainer. You never played this game. What all is going on? This game's called RimWorld. Um, what to say about RimWorld? This game is called RimWorld. <laughs> it's a game in which you make a base and keep your little people alive as best you can. And uh, we're kind of in the middle of a playthrough. At some point soon, at some point soon, you'll see us move to a new base and start free. 
Uh, but you care for the needs and desires of each of these people. You keep their moods high, make sure that everything they want and needs available. Um, they have relationships and friendships and talk to each other and hate each other. Occasionally you go to war, occasionally you build buildings. It's a lot. It's a lot. And we are kind of jumping in the middle of a playthrough that we started months ago. And I'm only half remembering what's going on with it. Except that everyone who's on medical emergency is just about healed up again. So no one's dying of the flu. That's what this game is about. No one dying of the flu. It really is one of my favorite games ever, though. Uh, I've played nearly 2,000 hours of it, and it's just a very, very, very good time. Okay, with the guns moving down, I'm probably going to bring a battery down also um, that we can use to power the guns. We could also just run a power wire the entire distance, and we have a lot of steel, so that's not so bad. You know what? Let's do that. Engineering! Engineering, please continue down this one. And put it far enough back that explosions will not destroy the power line. Good. It's a great game indeed, Sum. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree, Sum 1. It's a really, really great game. Every time I come back to it, I get a little excited. It's pretty wonderful. Okay, so the only person of the flu uh, ridden uh, who's still sick is Mr. Science, so that's fine. We're going to get rid of this bed and then invite Unnamed Comet and Politzia to again return to their marital situation. Assuming you are actually married, are you? <laughs> One second. Uh, make sure to make uh, random strangers a shack up there. So Politzia and Unnamed Comet are indeed related that way. Good, good, good. We'll put away these bedrolls we're not using anymore. The guns I moved down are these. Cool. So the wire we're using to get power down to the Ancient Danger is on a switch. We'll have to flip that switch before we fight. Can't forget that. Uh, there might be robots inside the Ancient Danger, so I'd love to have an EMP weapon, though I do not see one in this stack at all. We have one very poor quality incendiary launcher to light things on fire, but no, we have no EMP weapons. Maybe someday. That said, Jack is pushing out weapons. SMG, some heavy flak pants. Have I made separate clothing for our meleeers? I have not. I have not. I have not. Which means that we need to do something to ensure that people who are meleeers have priority on clothing. Uh, because people who are gunners don't necessarily need the flak pants. What do they have on, though? Yeah, they have rhino leather pants instead. Might want to change that at some point. Hey, Dorgan, welcome back from vacation. Ready to watch some backpack? Rimworld! It's true, my friend. Welcome back to Rimworld. I'm sorry, not playing backpack battles. We actually played a couple days ago, but... Can't play back battles every day. No, no, no. I'm going to set up a new uh, outfit. I'm going to call Melee-er. 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 <laughs> Perfect. All right. This thing is going to need us to have non-tainted apparel, of course. And... I want them to be wearing their military headgear, which is a kind of armor in particular. Okay, and then flat jacket, flat pants, flat vest. For right now, it's all I want them to wear, I believe. They also wear, of course, like normal clothes underneath it. And normal clothes are where? Are they miscellaneous? Of course they are. Uh, all that's allowed. And we didn't say what quality they can wear. I'm going to say anything that's above half their ability. And ideally, anything that's above normal quality cat make sure that the normal anything outfit does not allow flak pants and also it's time for start having nice clothes for everyone good 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 okay the melee characters are rog Polizia, jack 
So, Rog goes Miller. Let's see, and Jackers also. So at this point, people start stripping themselves off to get the uh, the correct clothing on. I hope we have enough clothes for everybody. We'll see. Um, okay, we don't currently have a disposal spot for bad quality clothes, I believe. So let me go and set up one of those while I'm thinking about it. Wait, what's this? What's this? Uh, this is a spot to put uh, chunks of granite in particular. No worries. Instead, we'll throw one back here. That is for any clothes that are breaking apart whatsoever. And that's going to be just apparel. Fine. I don't have any legendary apparel, so I'm not going to rub that right now. Usually with legendary apparel, I wouldn't have it destroyed. And then this one is going to be for any clothing of any uh, durability that's below normal quality. Good. Good to good. Uh, hopefully some clothes get started to move out there from the uh, storage pile here. We'll see. All right. The defensive line here is still coming together. And we should want to have more storage space. Uh, unfortunately, my little storage room is kind of strangely put together. There's not much open space at all. So were we staying long term, I'd go ahead and continue the storage room over this way, possibly cutting into the mountain. Speaking of cutting into the mountain, there's Plasteel there. Plasteel is important and valuable and lovely. So let's check and see. Yeah, we can grab that Plasteel with no problematic infestations. No bugs coming to get us. So we'll grab that. Let's go and check Mr. Science's health. As always, wondering how you doing. Drug production research completed. Build, build a drug lab for basic drug synthesis. Further research is needed for specific drugs. Drugs are good, okay. So we could now learn how to make um, like addictive drugs. Let's skip that. Instead, I want to head to making proper prescription medicine. So first we'll have to research microelectronics and then go up to that instead. It'll take a while, but that's fine. Uh, so my best cook, uh, not cook, <laughs> my best cook of walls, my best constructor, Tiz, uh, little Timmy, who doesn't need to be job one doctor anymore. Mm, I'm going to leave him on that. So you will construct very early here. He has way too many job ones. We need to modify that at some point. For now, the be second best is Cyber Oracle, who was cooking. I'm mean, have you return to hauling as well. You're also crafting. Okay. Um, I believe Politsia is a constructor. All right, Politsia, you're going to stop on research and head to construction first instead. Good. There we go. The power conduit now gets made. Mr. Science should try the effects of Psycho on Timmy. We could make this into a drug playthrough, I suppose. Might be a good deal of fun to do that. Poor little Timmy. How old is little Timmy now? He started at age 15. Now age 21. It's been a long life for little Timmy. On this, the never-ending... Never-ending episode of Mr. Science's adventure and empiricism. Okay, like I said, we should probably bring some traps down here also. We have a bunch right here, so we'll reinstall them just right through the middle. Let's see what we find. Um, wish I had some grenades. Fighting this way, I have just one tiny opening to fight through. And let me say, like, really directly, this is not a great setup. <laughs> so, uh, ideally, you want to have the setup off to the side so that enemies can't stay inside and fire out at you. Um... We'll see what happens. I'm sure we'll be fine, but as I built this, I think we had some problems here. Best at cooking, science and team here, Walter White and Jesse? Absolutely! You didn't ask what they're cooking, they're just cooking up a good time. Okay, I don't think we have shield belts yet, do we? No, my melee do not have shield belts, so they're not able to defend themselves from 
all enemies foreign and domestic in the way I'd like them to be able to. Where is that on the research tree? It might be farther on. Not seeing it. We can search, though. So they're called shield belts. There they are. So they're the next research if we want it. We'll fight before then, though, I suspect. Uh, in the morning. In the morning we go to fight. Sure. Uh, Mr. Science is still in bed. Make sure he's doing okay. I think he is. Yeah, 10 points of immunity ahead of his illness. We have so many prostheses here. Um, I believe that right now on research, we've only researched basic prostheses. At some point, we'll learn how to make better prosthetics, bionics instead, but as a ways away. That so many characters look so many body parts in this playthrough. I do wonder how that will continue. I shouldn't say this, but I feel like I'm becoming comfortable again with the uh, Mr. Science playthrough. As soon as I've gotten comfortable, I'm sure it's all going to fall apart all at once. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. All right, it is 5 a.m. It is time to rise and shine, everybody. So, Melayers, y'all come down this way. Cyber Oracle. You're my worst gunner. I think the gunners are from best to worst, left to right. Science guy, do you need healing right now? All right, science guy needs healing right now. And then he can come help fight. So it's have your breakfast, yum, yum, yum. Time to caravan. We're going to caravan after we get the uh, ancient danger far off. That is the current goal. Kids go. All right, science guy, I don't want you to self-tend. So we'll have Timmy rise and shine and take care of you. And then we'll go fight, fight, fight. Looking for any special weapons here that might help. Other than the really poor quality incendiary launcher, there's nothing super special there. Uh, tending is done. Timmy finishes breakfast. Come on down. Science guy, come on down. All right, Cyber Oracle. You're in charge of throwing the switch. Let's do it. So, mean guns online. All right, team. This is not the best lineup of really anything, to be honest. This is not a good setup for fighting under any conditions, but make it work. Make it work. Okay. So... Claim that. What do you think's inside, folks? Is it gonna be some robots? Is it gonna be some insects? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Uh, this would be a perfect place for EMPs to be thrown, by the way. If they're robots. Open the door! What's the worst that could happen? It is! Good lord. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? All right, so um, this fellow here, this fellow here has an incendiary inferno cannon. He wants to light everybody on fire. I prefer that not to be the case, just so you know. Uh, number two, uh, we have a centipede gunner with a gigantic minigun blast, blast, blast. Also not ideal. On the ground, though, we have a skill trainer. Uh, if we win, some become slightly more social, a little friendlier to one and all. All right, so I don't know in what order these things are going to come out, but we must fight them, obviously, with our steel swords and long rifles. <laughs> going to be glorious. So, uh, what I would like to do, like the ideal, obvious, best way to do this is these three me uh, meleeers catch one, two, three, those enemies. The two uh, robots with knives for arms, we shoot out uh, shoot down as they come out. Not sure that will work, but we'll see. Okay. For right now, Politsia, you're going to run back this way. I don't want to catch on fire. Are these the latest DLC? Uh, no, these are ones that have been around for a very, very long time. Yeah, all of these enemies have been here for a very, very long time. Okay. So, the other thing we could have done 
probably not the right call is to jam all of my meleers into this one spot um, to pick up enemies as they come out. But for right now, the Lancer's going to hang out here, try and take pot shots across the wall. They can one hit, hit one kill. Get a shot! Hit the wall, awesome. All right. You're coming out great. Who's my finest meleeer? I'm looking for any of them uh, tough. They're not. So Politzia, you grab guy number one. I'm switching policy to number two now. Let's see it turn this way. Cat. Things that are not ideal. Um, we don't like that our people are firing into who my meleers are. I'd like policy ideally to get off to the side to have a little bit better cover or protection or better angle relative to our gunners. We do see something is downed here. No, we don't. So the Lancer, unfortunately, is inside the pile of enemies. It's shooting so darn hard. I believe the melee are going to come out. We'll see in a second here. Okay, Politzi has gotten free. Not ideal. Have we been shot by our own people yet? So far, no. Uh, injured from being uh, hammer-headed by these. Jack has been shot by a gunshot. Who shot Jack? Jack. Cyber Oracle's bolt action rifle bullet narrowly missed the Lancer, piercing Jack's left leg. Frankly unacceptable. Okay, so if we're not going to be taking gunfire, we can move our gunners into a different position that is not firing quite so wildly into everybody. The big concern right now are there is still a Lancer in there. The Lancer is very, very close to dead. So I'm considering... Yeah, I'm going to have everyone, except for Kibbs, Kibbs out the way go this way actually um everybody else you're gonna focus fire on that lancer okay cool so policy is down <laughs> probably just due to bruising yeah four bruises there uh now missing a leg excellent excellent <laughs> All right, Rog, this is why you exist, my friend. The Lancer inside is down. So that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, so as of now, no one should be shooting out. It's just a matter of making sure that the two meleeers don't get through and cause big, big problems. The guns are going to continue firing into the middle. We're fine with that. I'd like everybody to get over this way. Don't get shot. Please don't get shot. Hey, Jack's down. Okay. So Jack is down due to having been shot by Cyber Oracle. Curses to you. Uh, so who is the most well-geared of our shooters? Uh, more properly, who's our worst shooter? It's either Cyber Oracle or Kibbs. So Cyber Oracle's shooting is is a five. Sorry, Kibbs is a five. Cyber Oracle is a seven. Who has better armor on? Mmm. You're about the same. Kibbs! Time to go melee! Time to go melee! Great. Very good, very good, very good. So, uh, we didn't get onto the enemy quite fast enough, and so it launched its Inferno Cannon. Uh, it's now in melee. That's great. So, Mr. Science caught on fire. Just briefly, all good. Cyber Oracles put themselves out. Timmy, also on fire. You're all fine. Uh, let's go put out un... Name Comet. Everybody else get out of the pile here. Okay. So, we'd like both of you to... I mean, ideally be back over here. Uh, everyone's not on fire anymore. We're now going to focus... Get out of the way, don't get shot. So we're gonna focus fire on the nearby Inferno Cannon. Inferno Cannon is down now to about 20% life. That's good. Other one, about 30% life. Fine. Under control, lovely. This is a uh, bullets offline. It may have shot Rog. I'm not sure, did it? Nah, missed entirely. Uh, Jack is down here. 
Again, 21 hours till death, all the time in the world. I prefer the northern enemy to die first, because if someone dies first, the Mather comes running out like the Dickens. We don't want that. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, okay, one is down, one is up. Um, so now we want to move everyone back through the wall. Don't get shot. Don't get shot. <laughs> if I just say don't get shot, they won't get shot. So Buddy here now has about 10% health left on that robot. So in a moment here, we gotta have Rog turn and run away. Unfortunately, Rog has 8% movement speed. What that means is Rog can't run away in principle. So Rog is probably gonna be ripped apart by a Scyther. That's fine. That's what Rog signed up for. Everything's fine. Okay, it's down now. Rog run. Rog run. Hey, Rog's getting away. Well dodged, my friend. Well dodged. Just keep running. Just keep running. Everything is fine. And that, my friends, is how you fight an ancient danger. <laughs> All right. Everything's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. All right. So, uh, Polizia, you're going to be fine. Uh, Jack here... You got some problems. You got 20 hours, though. That's fine, too. All right. Mr. Science, go rescue Jack, please. In the middle here, we have an excellent longsword. Gotta, gotta save that. Uranium longsword. Gotta save that, too. Now, the further thing to say, of course, is that we don't know what's inside of the ancient crypto sleep caskets. There could be many enemies, uh, many lost humans, just not sure. Should probably fight them, too, while we're thinking about it. A lot of blood here. A lot of blood there. I don't know. Also, EMP grenades are pretty amazing for mech fights. Did you, did you miss the part where I went, huh, where are my EMP grenades? Where are my EMP grenades? That happened a bit ago. <laughs> and yes, indeed, I don't know where my EMP grenades are. It's possible I never had any. That's what happens when you're uh, gone from a playthrough for uh, three months or so. <laughs> But yeah, we'll open up the castle in a little bit. Uh, so this is a skill trainer of social. Who do we want to have uh, become better at all things sociality? Doesn't particularly matter. Mr. Science is a 10. Little Timmy's a 10. Kids of Brits is a 10. Comet's a 4. Several a 4. Rog a 13. Uh, so the person who's highest I'm probably going to give it to to help with trading and such. Assuming they have no major deficits to trading. Most of them having body parts missing. They don't. They're actually just fine. So it'll be okay. And then Mr. Science is still working on bringing Jack in. It is a slow process of getting home, but Jack still probably has another, what, 12 hours until he dies. Is that true? Let's see. Uh, 19 hours. More than enough time. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Okay. When you're better, Rog, you'll use that. Do we have machining tables right now? So we do. Also, someone has a heat stroke. We should figure out who that is. Mr. Science has a heat stroke. You're fine. You're back home. You're all fine. That's right. Rog's got some great stories about what happened there. And by plugging this machine into his head, he'll understand how to tell those stories to everyone. Okay, science guy went to sleep. But little Timmy is doing the doctoring. Good job, little Timmy. Want to make sure you're focused on the people who are most wounded first. So Pulitzia here is malnourished. We're fixing that first. And then when that's done, you'll get back tending to Jack, I believe. Because Jack is still... Oh, Jack's fine. Jack caught on fire. He's all fine. Uh, who's the one who actually took the real damage here? Ah, it's unnamed Comet. Only missing a toe. After all of that, missing only one toe. Ah, uh, friends, we've been live for an hour now. Our first ad break's upon us. We'll go ahead and take a three-minute little break right now. Get back to the game after that. You'll miss absolutely nothing. None of this high-tier gameplay with no obvious mistakes. Instead, we'll do some crossword puzzles. Now, unfortunately, there is no new New Yorker crossword puzzle yet. So I'm going to work on, instead, the Washington Post from last week, which... 
unfortunately, it's very hard for you all to see correctly. Can I embiggen it a little bit? All right, if I embiggen it like that one, it's not quite perfect, but we'll call that good enough. Here we go for three, uh, three minutes. Uh, who knew? I have no idea. P D alert, the all points bulleted. Uh, in jest to eat. Uh, in the past ago, dollop. Um, dollop's like a small amount, possibly a dab, sure. Sensitive subject, I have no idea. Um, surname in a stick song. Uh, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, I believe is theirs. Do I intend to start a whole new column when DLC drops? Yes, whole new playthrough uh, with uh, a storyline based only on the new DLC and the attendant free patch. Should be good. Uh, meat in a Hawaiian cuisine. I don't know, pork possibly? We'll see. Uh, teaser ads, a promo. Italian wine region, I believe Asti. Uh, divination, uh, omens. Uh, searing, not sure. State in northern India. Things I don't know, unfortunately. Uh, temporary, the bar or restaurant is pop up. So um, pork is wrong then. Uh, publisher with a Mountain Peak logo. So I don't know, except that I know that TOR, Tor, is a publisher for sci fi, I believe, in fantasy, maybe completely fall apart as a deal or an app title for this puzzle. Completely fall apart. Hmm. A marine mammal that uses rock to crack shells is the otter, so Dob is wrong. wrong. Dab is wrong. Possibly Gob instead. Completely fall apart. Go... Um, state capital in the Treasure Valley. That's Idaho, so it's Boise. Divination, reading the entrails, cornomancy, head scratchers, possibly just puzzles. That's how it's spelled. Um, enigmas, uh, cases. A speedometer stat could either be kilometers or um, kilometers or miles per hour. You have concern about twenty-two down, saying alu. Twenty-two down is alu. Uh, what do you want to bet it says potato in Indian cuisine? Blank Gobi, South Asian potato dish. Woo! Have no fears, it's all right. Uh, blank Boost, three letters blank boost. No idea. A twin set. Uh, so the twins play baseball, of course. Uh, and so it could be like a set of innings. It could be a set of bases. Uh, twins have the same DNA, if they're the right kind of twins. Uh, online admin. Online admin. No idea. Uh, Doctor of Rap. Dr. Dre or Dr. Zordi. Uh, French cheers. All right, so uh, we say cheers. Japanese say kanpai. English people say chin chin, surely. <laughs> um. I don't remember, I don't remember. A screwdriver and a pinch. Uh, and a pinch, a screwdriver could be like a, a wedge, a pry bar, uh, not sure. Uh, chewy candy bars introduced in 1921. No clue, full of the latest, uh, possibly newest. I'm not sure on that one though. That doesn't fit at all, unfortunately. A triumphant cry, I win, maybe. I won also. Fresh start, no idea. You two singers, Bono. Little Meower. How about a kitty? Canon of film. <sighs> Insert actress name here. A toy on some holiday cards. A dreidel, a top, a sled, I like. Uh, Matzo's lack. Uh, Matzo has no yeast. Last four digits, IDs. Um, sorry, non Americans. Last four digits, their social security numbers. Uh, all right, ad break is done. We'll get back to that one in an hour or so. Hello, it's me. <laughs> wrong button. <laughs> I gotta find something better to say when I push the wrong button and bring up Big Resorty other than hello. <laughs> hello, I didn't expect to see you there. <laughs> All right, we're back to it. Everything's under control. Everything is good. Mr. Science had the flu earlier. Still has a major flu that was about 12 points ahead of... Yeah, 12 points ahead of, of uh, true illness and death. This should be okay. 
I think in the morning we'll go open up these, uh, as was nicely said, um, coffin gotcha game and see what I get. Why did our battery get broken? It just breaks regularly. Uh, there's no good reason for it because because we're bad people. Uh, just from time to time, things randomly break as a way to keep you on your toes. And so some constructor will go fix it at some point, as long as we have components left, which we do indeed have. Um, this kind of random breaking is so frustrating when a um, when you're playing a playthrough with very limited component access. So if you're playing a, like a North Pole, North Pole playthrough where you have no mountains and bad things keep happening and then suddenly a machine breaks, it's the game just saying, I hate you. Thanks for playing, I hate you. Do they break more often when outside? So I've never heard that before. That does not mean the answer is no. I just have not heard of that ever, ever, ever. And now I'm very curious that's actually true. <laughs> um, where would I even find that? It wouldn't be on the information page. Have any of the rest of you ever heard this? That things break more often when outside? Pardon me, I, I do not know the answer to this question. I hear a lot of like folk knowledge when I play RimWorld. Let's see if it's true. That's not the right window. Uh, one second, point the old Google. All right, the old Google. Reddit RimWorld, um, break chance outdoors? Mm, not mental breaks. Um, what's the word for it? Yeah, if batteries get rained on, that's definitely fine. Yeah, de definitely if batteries get rained on, they explode. That's that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, how's it even called? So what's it called? A component repair. The component problem. I think it's called repair. So what's the opposite of repair? I need repair outdoors. <laughs> uh, room world. Room world, you're not helping me here. Deteriorate. No, deteriorate, unfortunately, is when the, the number that starts at 100% goes to 0% down to down. Zit chance? No, I don't mean the zit chance. I don't mean the zit chance. So zit chance is when it has a possibility of losing all its power. I mean, this thing in particular, the flash... Oh, it's called broken down. The game calls it broken down. Okay. So rim, 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 rim world, broken down outdoors. Put the not two right. A rogue, thank you. Breakdown event. So it is an event, just not a pop event. Get rid of the uh, world breakdown. Here we are. Awesome, thank you. All right. When mechanical electrical components of certain power consuming appliances stop functioning. Yep, 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 yep. Um, broken down building stops working. Behaving if turned off. Yep, true, true, true. Um. I don't see anything here about being outdoor, so it's that. No, I don't think it breaks down more regularly if it's outdoors, uh, but thank you for the question. I'm not going to confidently say, no, that's not the case, uh, but we're not on the roof thing. Like, roof thing, it has a roof, don't worry. Don't worry, I was not born rim yesterday. Uh, I mean, I had Cyber Oracle pull these... Oh, there's no place to store those weapons. We gotta get those back in if possible. You've never had one break? Okay, time for competing anecdotes. Well, I've had all of them break. Huh? What now? What? <laughs> nah. It's possible they break and you haven't noticed um, because workers do automatically repair things. If you have a constructor, they will go repair them. I believe before doing new repair, or new building rather, yeah, the first job in construction is fix broken down buildings. So it might be happening automatically like this right here, for example. But just like that, all better. Good. So this spot is going to be for swords exclusively, and they're most important to live there. We can invite someone to bring them home. Better yet. You two are back on your feet again. Just get your swords back. Medical emergency. Mr. Science got a bed. 
97.7 immunity, 84% uh, flu. He'll be just fine very, very soon. Good. Good. There may be a mod that makes it um, break more often out outdoors or indoors. Uh, possibly. Uh, with with RimWorld, there's a mod that will do anything you want to do. I never doubt that. That said, we're playing completely mod-free this time, so pure base game action before your eyes. Ah, but once we get out of any uh, non-pack survival meals, which means people might be heading towards hunger. Yeah, fairly soon here. Because Mr. Science has gone to bed instead of healing up, uh, cooking regularly. So, Cyber Oracle, back to cooking you go. Have a little sleep first. Your sleep need is good enough. Let's get cooking. Um, kind of want to just go open these and see what happens. Uh, Rog, we'll have you use the skill trainer. This is my favorite part of the game, like number one right here. Just thinking through it's such a beautiful moment. That thing on the ground has a little pokey part. What's he gonna do with that pokey part? What's gonna happen? Ah, you stick it through the orbit of the eye. <laughs> Rog is gonna insert a needle into himself in order to become better at social skills. If it doesn't kill him, he'll improve. So part of the next uh, DLC, or not the DLC, but the attendant patch for the DLC, um, is books. Books help you research. Uh, I think right now one of the other large streamers of RimWorld is playing a no research only books playthrough in which they are learning all the research for the game just from books. That seems like it's a pretty fun way to go. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, how wounded are we still? Mm, looking pretty bad. Looking pretty. He just finished it. Oh, that's awesome. Pesky, that's so cool. Uh, just has such an amazing sense of how the game can be played in really complex ways that I would never think of. I think of here's some goofy stories. He thinks of why use a large portion of the game's mechanics? How about we instead just do uh, not use that part? <laughs> and I think that's a, an absolutely delightful way of going. All right, Cyber Oracle is currently linked into Eternal Labor. We'll stop it there. There's now food for folks again. Good, good, good. What's the worst that could happen if we head out now? Our people are so wounded, might become even more wounded. Let's see what happens. Uh, so what we could do here is move absolutely everyone into this area. Now there's no way that all of these will be super warriors inside the caskets. So if we just line up together and focus fire, I'm sure we'll be okay. All right, the healthiest of my meleeers is Polizia, who's moving very slowly. Oh, you're missing a leg, aren't you? I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Note to self, give, uh, give Polizia a leg. Hey, it's raining. Hey, it's, it's after midnight. What are we doing? Late at night here. All uh, right. Quest available, the bandit camp. You, Hakuju Ito, chief of the Carnival Treaty, has sent us a message. Apparently, tribes will base a nearby camp and raiding their caravan. The camp is controlled by the Olga Covenants. Hakuju wants us to destroy the camp, eliminating all the enemies and turrets. There are five tribes people there. If we do so, we can improve our crafting. We can get the yellow tribal folks to like us, or possibly, 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 we can get ourselves some nice spears. We're gonna ignore that one for right now. Okay, so, it is nighttime, there is no light, that means we're gonna miss a tremendous amount. Sounds fun to me. Politia, let's go open this one, please. Okay, that could have been much, much, much worse. Are you holding grenades? That's a rifle. So of the people who popped out, only two are moving, uh, one of whom is neutral to us and one of whom is hostile. Edmund the Astronomer. Hello, Edmund. You're very good at shooting. You're very, very smart. You're 14 years old. And you are in the process of taking some drugs. 
Welp. Let's see how that goes for you, my friend. Oh, there are a couple uh, cute little Mega Scarabs also. Cute little bugs going out. Uh, Achoa here has decided that he wishes to join on our side of this battle. Achoa, the 16-year-old urchin soldier. Maybe they have some earlier animus. And that is that. All right, we can go through now and check out all these people. Martina the Ranger. Wow, an ancient soldier. On the ground there is a heavy SMG. She also has armor on. We could steal these people's clothes. <laughs> it's a lot of pretty upgraded clothing. Am I a monster? Hello to Trujillo. Very good shooting. I don't really want more colonists. But I do want clothes. Uh, how do we turn this into a science lessons for the kids? Mr. Science needs to talk about expropriation of the expropriator. I believe that's what happens here. Okay, Comet Friend, let's strip some clothing. All right, kids and britches unfortunately demented as wander out confusedly. Poor kids. Poor kid is dementia, age 56, already having a real rough time. Ah, uh, some new assault rifles, it's a big upgrade on some of our guns. They're just normal quality, but that's a-okay. Everyone's vomiting on the floor, terrible, terrible. All right, so everyone's back up and going, everyone's in okay health. We're gonna say tomorrow, is that right? Tomorrow, say like two days from now, we will leave. Between now and then, I want to get all of these items hauled into our little base here. And then back on the road we go. So, what is this corner of things? Stockpile zone number three is made for... Nothing, except for chunks of granite, I believe. I'm going to allow everything to go there, just for now, to get all of these things hauled in. Got some gold, got some drugs, got some lots of stuff. Imagine waking up for sleeping for a hundred years and some random people steal your clothes. <laughs> they weren't using them. It'd be great if there's some way to pack them back into the uh, back into the sleep caskets. <laughs> I don't think there is. Uh, and I believe also if you take apart these caskets, you get only um, what's it called? You get only steel. I don't think you get anything especially nice for taking them apart, but. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are monsters in this playthrough. All that matters is the persistence of our band, even the cost of our, mor our morals. Uh, it's smoke pop pack there, so we can keep our melee a little safer with those. All right, is someone on job one hauling? Someone must be. Um, so common after taking care of the animals is hauling, and no one is purely job one hauling. So let's change it around. Uh, Cyber Oracle, if I move you down on that, you'll do hauling after the cleaning is done. And look at this! Hey! I forgot about this area. Our Panther Cougar, rather, is hauling dead folks out the way. Oh, that's a nice thing to do. Good job, Panther Cougar thing. Hello, Grobzilla. Rumor's going very well today. Having a lot of fun exploring the world together and seeing what's going on. Okay, so Cyber Oracle once again sleeping in a weird part of day. What does my uh, daily assignment look like anyway? Okay, so Cyber Oracle's intention in the night shift. I don't recall why that is. I mean, are you a, a night owl? No, do you hate everyone? Eh, not, not exactly, not exactly. Okay, earlier we had someone trying to make friends with an elephant. Did that ever get done? It did not. Had someone tried recently. Unnamed Comet made some calming noise through the elephant. Said, don't worry, buddy, your ears aren't too big for you. The other elephant's just mean. Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> I was wondering what ele uh, Unnamed Comet was doing. Is he getting ready to go... Uh, Tame the elephant. Nope, he is currently carrying elephant meat around. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect.
perfect. <laughs> uh, good, good, good. Uh, I love other people help haul things in. So, uh, Timmy's already on the job. Don't need to ask for it. Hello, Chili. You're just poor buddy. Night owl pessimistic slow learner. Tyson, we could keep you alive. I should have decided that a long time ago. I'm sorry, we've taken your gold. Now we'll be using your blood to fertilize the crops, surely. Okay, so this spot for hauling literally everything in is not big enough. So we'll expand it through this room, which I tend not to do. I like having a well-organized room like this one. But in preparation for leaving, I don't mind that kind of giant pile. So, for heavy SMG, um, one of my lower quality shooters should have that gun. Cyberwolf is at 8. Unnamed is at 17. So Kibbs and Britches with your shotgun. I move you to the heavy SMG now for lots of shooting and your action doesn't matter too terribly much. I, I guess we stop growing now. That's I already have a lot of sewing turned off on at least some of them. Make sure they're all not sewing now. Okay. I'm excited to get to our next base and start fresh on the building up. Timmy, you have a long rifle on 18 shooting. I'm going to give you the nicer assault rifle here. We have one more chain shotgun. And chain shotguns do crazy damage at close range, but I hope they're not going to get at close range hardly at all. Okay. Uh, how much do turrets weigh? I think it's 10 kilograms, right? Only 8 kilograms. So we might take these turrets with us on the road. Hmm. Yeah. We'll start reinstalling everything to get packed up pretty soon. Now, as soon as we uninstall these, enemies are definitely coming to attack. I guarantee it. I guarantee. We'll take some steel with us. We still have 18 components. So I don't need to take apart literally everything. This table has been with us since our very first move. Uh... Years and years and years ago, when we started our trip around the world, this table was made in base number one, so it must come along. Pass that everything else, I'm less sure. Such a walk. Such a long, long walk. I might turn everyone into a hauler briefly to get all these things hauled in. Yeah. Too much walking back and forth otherwise. So, um, right now it's going to increase everyone job one hauling, and I'm sure I remembered how to change this back to where it was previously, <laughs> otherwise. Uh, lowering all these other ones is going to be a bit annoying, but at least this will make people who are focused on research or cleaning move items first. So we leave that as it is. Another day is upon us. And we can just mark individual things to get moved. Hey, Jim Iconius has a flu. You're a muffalo. We can't have our muffalos dying. If we get on the road, they'll treat them on the road. So, you're a big animal. The flu won't take that long to take you over, though. So we'll give you a little place to sleep for right now. Is that you? Good job. A doctor will care for you fairly soon. Kibbit's not ready. Timmy is also... Looks like basically everybody is moving stuff around already. Yeah, good stuff. Did someone tend to Jim Iconius? Yes, indeed. Quality of tend was 70%. That's absolutely good enough. We can go ahead and harvest our potatoes we got on the road here. Get those. And the rice. Did I never? Okay, I was about to say, did I never plant uh, any heal root here? I did. We probably got at least one. Yeah, we got multiple harvests. That's why our next research is heading into medical production, so I can start moving my boring old herbal medicine into upgraded herbal medicine. At least we have 25 Neutramine with one HP left. Oh boy, that Neutramine is going to get absolutely destroyed our next base. Unless we can find a way to unload it directly into a roof, a roofed room. Nah, it's gonna be gone. Poor Neutramine. 
Is someone still a leg? Oh, good call. Yeah, we are missing one leg still. We should probably fix that. One prosthetic leg. Timmy is uh, working on SMG first. I wonder if we're making SMGs just to sell. I'm not quite sure why we're doing that. I should stop that entirely. Okay, did everything get moved in? Uh, poor headless Chili. What happened, Chili? Your neck was bitten off. Didn't see who did it, so it's like it never really happened. He came from the store that way. What do you mean he came with a head? Sounds like some customers being a little greedy. Okay, okay. So we'd like to have Unnamed Comet try to recruit the elephant one more time. We then want to make sure we have this leg made, which is getting done right now. Cool. And then we'll install that. And I think we can't load into a caravan while a character is um, anesthetized. So to hang out a little while longer. Mr. Science, are you, are you on job one cooking or job one research? You're on job one cooking and research, but cooking will happen first. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we can put a haul back down again for anyone who's not actually truly doing hauling before things to the right. Good. Like needs 79 more work. Jack, there is no sleeping. Long hours. No overtime pay, though. No unionization allowed. Just keep working you. What do you mean relaxing socially? No, no, no. No breaks. Only 27 work left to do. Uh, we do not have good medicine, so this leg needs to be installed by our best physician in the best, cleanest room we got. <laughs> so... Uh, you're missing your right leg. Replace the r right leg with the prostheses. Okay. We're giving you medicine. Good. Mr. Science, here we go. Hope we can find some traders soon. We got a whole bunch of stuff I'd love to sell, but it's kind of just hanging out here, raising our base value unnecessarily. That's more plasteel, making plasteel weapons eventually, or the upgraded hats and such. All right, so what is the next biome we're heading to? So on the world map here, we are here. On the way, we could go to an item stash. We do not know what's there, enemy-wise. If we go there, we get joy wire and some amazing sculptures. You know what? I'd like to go there. How far of a walk is it from current base to there? 2.8 days. All right, so hopefully from there to here. Our real goal is to get down to this location. We have how much food right now? 120 packs of meals on three, six, eight characters. We can walk for a pretty good distance then. That'll be quite nice. Hello to you, Lancelot. Thunder thought, how's it going? The stream is now your default. I want about Wrexham, even though, even though I couldn't watch place. I mentioned how Wrexham did in the intro. That said, you probably not here for that. So, yeah, this weekend, the uh, football club I watch uh, did win 2-1. Uh, to one. Uh, The first 60 moments, or 60 minutes of the game was absolutely terrible. <laughs> in some sense, they did not look like they should win. Uh, they played incredibly passively. Um... The first goal was a fairly good cross into uh, into Paul Mullen, uh, standing just in front of the goal, and he headed it in. Uh, it's his 100th goal for Wrexham in the past three years. It's a lot of goals. Uh, the second goal was a uh, first score ever for one of our young defenders, Max Cleworth. Just another headed ball that uh, went to the corner of the net. So um, the first 60 minutes of the game, I was saying to myself, man, why am I even watching this? Away games are terrible. All we do is lose out on the road. But they won. It was nice. Hooray. Is Rexman in promotion contention again? Yeah, they are. They are. They're in uh, second place in League 2 with four matches left to go. So uh, I don't want to say they're definitely going to League 1, but it is a real possibility. Um, their penultimate game of the uh, of the season is against the people in first place. 
So the possibility of winning the championship, uh, though as of right now, first place is four points ahead of Wrexham, so it would require um, Stockport, the first place club, to lose. So there you go. That's my bit about Wrexham for today. I'm excited to see another promotion, of course, and see uh, how the team is overhauled in the offseason. Uh, though, of course, many of their players who were put on long contracts with the League 2 campaign this year um, will not be gotten rid of right away. So hopefully the league one year, next year, is a let's avoid rele relegation and just uh, solidify our, our team's strengths a bit. What am I going to do? A couple weeks here, no more football season. What am I going to do? Oh, the last game of the season is actually Stockport? Oh, I thought it was penult penultimate, but no, it's actually last of the season. It's even more exciting. Unnamed Comets walking around. Why? Because it's dark outside. Is that really what's wrong with you? It's just dark outside? <laughs> Also, some of my gunners have uh, smoke pop belts on. We do not want that. Um, yeah, we don't want that because it means that my gunners be shooting out of smoke. I believe that lowers their accuracy. So let me go change around the current outfits where non meleeers may not wear smoke pop packs. I wish you're not wrong. We could play full manager all off season. There are enough good games coming out soon, though, that I need to not get uh, the siren's call of a full manager this season. Gotta, gotta instead just play strategy games and not just Excel games. All right, it is time for us to go. Hey, Cuttlefish, just got back into RimWorld so good. Welcome back. Uh, I'm just getting back into it all, so I'm about three months away. I just want to leave, but no! A psychic wave is all over the landscape. The calls are okay, but the rabbits have been driven insane. Uh, luckily, there are only three rabbits here, so we should be good to go. Uh, Frostpunk 2's beta is right after the Rumble DLC. I intend to play a Frostpunk 2 beta if I get access to it, for sure. It's a great game. Um, my guns have already been put away, so we're gonna have to go fight the rabbits ourselves. So, hello everyone, it's bedtime. Let's go stand in the middle, though, and see if we can find some rabbits to fight. Where are they? This is my favorite eye test part of the game. There's one! Uh, will we die to rabbits? We just can't, we just can't. Uh, come to Cyber Oracle also. Cyber Oracle's not a good fighter at all. And a raid! Come on! Come on! This is what I get for mocking the three rabbit attack. We're now being properly attacked. A group of outlanders from the Concord of Arnuia have arrived in transport pods nearby. They'll prepare for a while, then they will attack. Prepare a defense or attack them preemptively. Mr. Science's uncle is in this group. His uncle's name is Lips. How about that? Uh, so they appear to all be coming here. It's far away. We got some time. Uh, so Cyber Oracle was running from that rabbit. It's just a rabbit, so stand and fight. Um, did it run past Cyber Oracle? <laughs> it appears to have missed. That's weird. All right, Cyber Oracle, run away then. You're not a good fighter. Uh, Jack, stand and fight. Cyber Oracle, get in the corner there. Uh, luckily, our wild, our wild uh, hail fire, hail storm of bullets missed the rabbit and hit Jack instead. Who got shot? Jack did by Kibbs again. Kibbs, no. Uh, we will not die to rabbits. We can't die to rabbits. Both of us are down. Good. There's one more rabbit somewhere. It's coming. Uh, we'll ignore that for right now. Here is the raid. So, they are outlanders. This fellow has on his back a smoke pop pack. So when he gets shot, uh, obscures incoming shots, prevents turrets from locking on. They have better armor and better weapons than I do. On the whole. On the whole. Also, smoke pops only block incoming shots, not outgoing ones. So being on our gunners would be fine, actually. Okay, um, so coming from the south, this is what we ideally want to set up. Um, 
We don't have turrets down there, but this is what we'd like anyway. So Cyberhole got some dirt in her eyes from fighting the rabbits. No one's really that damaged though. Uh, let's go set up and see what we can get figured out. I believe this is far enough that only very long weapons, like the sniper rifle, can shoot. <laughs> if you weren't watching the camera, one of my uh, little sound <laughs> sound foams just fell on my head. <laughs> uh, so when the weather changes from warm to cold or cold to warm, they stop hanging on terribly well just during the temperature change. So. Yep, there's a hole in my ceiling now. <laughs> hey, Kraus, happy sound foam attack day to you also. Yeah, I'll probably have to rehang all of them at some point. Uh, like I said, the, the glue or adhesive has trouble in between the, uh, in between the uh, seasons. Again, Kraus, thank you for generosity and I apologize for assaulting myself on stream. <laughs> Uh, one last rabbit. Trying to be stealthy there. Hey, good stuff, good stuff. Okay, so, as I said, I'm kind of expecting the enemies to post up over this direction. And we'll then want to have our meleeers go engage them. Uh, for now, just kind of got four shooters not doing terribly much. And let's see how long till the enemies come. There are quite a few of them. Uh, wish that I had um, mortars, clearly. Turrets would not be the worst thing. So one thing we could do, if we have time right now, is I could move the turrets down and a battery down also to help. Let's see what kind of time we have on this one. So, science guy, you grab that. Battery, please don't rain and explode. Jack, get that one. Uh, this is not well set up for hurts at all. I think it's going to explode and kill everyone, but maybe it'll work out just fine. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Hello, all of you. Their armor, their armor is terrible. Oh, gosh. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Uh, so we have 457 power. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's okay, though. Uh, is this battery still plugged in? It is. They were both set up to uh, feed directly into the line, not through each other. All right, science dude, you stay in fight. Jack, come back. Unnamed Comet, no longer wandering sadly. Once you have your uh, smoke pop belt, forgot how it worked earlier, so everyone can now wear smoke pop if they want to. Let me put that back on. And he's currently carrying a long rifle still. Um, he's a 17 in shooting, so I'm going to stay with that for now. Are you coming to fight me? The longer we stay outside without eating, the worse this is going to be. Uh, they don't seem to have any incendiary launchers. That's not true. Uh, me right here has incendiary launchers. Or singular. That is the number one target. Grenade's less important. No one put on the fancy new armor. Is that true? That is true. And here they come. Well, this will be fine. Okay, team. Here they come. We're keeping an eye on Ame in particular, who's right here. To the point I might have Melairs go engage her immediately. Melairs come around. Do, 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 do. A lot of enemies. Ame's right here. Are you moving slowly, Ame? Nope, just kind of trundling along. Major break risk. Kids and britches, what's wrong with you? You've been violated by the body parts attached to you to keep you able to move. How terrible. <laughs> You're also hungry. You do have food in your pocket. All right, all right, all right. Drop back, get some eating going. Other ones coming this way, um, long rifle, revolver, chain shotgun, terrifying, even Ame. So, if we hurry down, 
chain shotgun and I may have got to be the targets straight away. Okay, these come up the middle. We're gonna focus fire over the highest shooting on the best gun. So Martin is terrifying if he gets close range of that shotgun. He's a pretty good shooter. The assault rifle is the initial target. So all of you, shooter here, please. The first round of shooting, completely ineffective. <laughs> so everyone missed over one person who had the bullet bounce off. Good, good, good. All right, Porletsia, you get under Rin. Raug, you get into Ame. Jack, you go here. So a lot more bullets went in. Only a little injured right now. Fine. So man with chain shotgun has less armor, so we can shift to him now. Okay, things have happened. Things have happened. I heard a smoke pop there, so lowered accuracy on that person. That's they're moving out of it themselves. That's fine. Uh, Meleers are trying to position as fast as possible. Amei has gone where? Huh. I may have said just light this power conduit on fire. I have no idea why. <laughs> Absolutely no clue what's going on. Grenades. Okay. So things are happening we would like not to have happen. Namely, I didn't see this grenadier. It's probably on a line to hit Politia. It is. Uh, yes, it is. Now it's not good. Cat. One down. Awesome. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Ame concerns me now. Jack's in pretty bad shape. Was shot through the leg by the chain shotgun and we knew it was coming. So, policy is on him. I'd like to have Jack to move around and get on the Grenadier, ideally. And then Rog onto Ame. We'll look at that in a moment. Hey, chain shotgun's down. Honey the Spy has gotten through. And also, Nixon the chain shotgun is also. Alright. Alright. Probably going for cover behind the battery. Fun little problem to solve. Also, my best shooter is currently in melee. We can't have that. So you two turn and fire. You turn and fire. Kibbs, go this way. Delightfully, they're using cover. It's my cover. Less delightfully, someone's down due to the uh, grenade I didn't see coming. So Pulitzi is down due to frag grenade, etc. Fine. Okay. Okay. This is going very poorly. We actually might lose everything right here. Um. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Uh, I'm not seeing any especially clever ways to get out of this one right now. Um, that we allowed ourselves to get encircled was not ideal, <laughs> to put it frankly. Uh, also, that we uh, split in half, not ideal, frankly. Uh, if I can't watch the Grenadiers, I can't then uh, micro around them. So that's that's not so good. Okay, this gun is aiming at Nixon through Kibbs. We don't like that so much, so please move. Cap. Mr. Science is still meleeing. Been stabbed in the ear. The ear? Out of all possible body parts, the ear. So interestingly, there are very few enemies attacking here. Uh, we gotta focus fire on Spleen. That said, this gun's gonna do a tremendous amount of damage to all of us. Okay. My goodness. Kibbs, how do you shoot Nixon there? Poor so. Wound the rib cage. Good job. All right. Um, so we could move from the heavy SMG to the chain shotgun. It's bio code. It's actually no, we can't. This is the last stand for sure. Okay. You get attacked now. 
10. Down here, all the mailers down. Inferno Cannon still going, or Incendiary Cannon still going. Also, grenades. Also, chain shotgun. Good job, team. Good job, team. <clears throat> oh, Smoke Pop would be good. Absolutely right. Mr. Science, unfortunately, is down also. Do only the bruises. Do only the bruises. Okay. So we have three characters left. Grenade is most terrifying. Mini turret is still shooting also. It's trying its best. If we fall back, we could try to use our animals as shields. It's a little bit too late for that. Um... Hope beyond hope, I suppose, that the, uh... Yeah, hope beyond hope, I suppose, that the, uh... Grenadier steps into a trap. Hey, they did. That's great. So what kind of playthrough do you want to do next? What kind of playthrough do you feel next, folks? That's the question here. That's gonna explode. Um, it's gonna hit Cyber Oracle, who cannot move out the way. It won't hit Timmy. Okay, Cyber Hole still alive. Missing an eye, missing some legs, dies in two hours. <laughs> I'm a little bummed the playthrough's gonna end this way. Um, yeah, we identify that as being a big group of enemies. I should have ran away right away. I should have said goodbye to the colony, but it's been a good one. I can't wait for uh, the 1.5 release coming this week um, that Cyber Oracle will be able to crawl away to safety. Very little ado, we just see him down there. All right. We got two folks left. I'd like to stay inside of the, uh, of the, um, what do we call it? Inside of the smoke there. They have smoke also. We are not covered relative to them. The enemies behind also. So step into this corner, please, Timmy. Okay. Incendiary launcher, unfortunate, unfortunate. Go to the unstable branch. I tend not to use the unstable branch until I'm ready for the um, actual release. I, I want to see it in its final version, but we could go to the unstable branch possibly. All right, Timothy, it comes down to how effectively can you shoot literally anybody? This is the big concern, that incendiary launcher, and chance of hitting right now is 23. Compared to Into the Smoke is uh, 14. All right, Timothy, I believe in you. You're not in the corner yet. Keep going. Good. Good. <laughs> All right, some damage taken by Ame now. Rin is about half health. Kib's about the same. All right, that's online again. Doesn't matter. I'm so bad at movement. Uh, team's on fire now. Kip is down. It was a fun run. It was a fun run. <sighs> yeah, when I came back... Man in black! Man in black! All right. Possibility of saving the story after all. Boyer the contract miner with a 16 in shooting. He's a pessimistic man. He's not sure about why he's even here. But he decides it's time to clean up Dodge. All right, so, so far they've not decided to steal my people, which means they could try to heal people back up again. Three hours dying, no. When I came back to this playthrough today and didn't remember exactly what I was doing, it was, um, unfortunate. So, Axix the Boom Rat has died. They're attacking more my animals. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Well, it was fun regardless, but. But, 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 but. Okay, man in black. Kibs back up again. Kibs, you hero, are you bleeding? You're not bleeding. God. So part of us thinks we should try to go save people, but they all die very, very soon. Um, let's just grab the nearest gun. Get behind the wall. Oh, they see you. Oh, they see you. <laughs> All right. The man in black ran to the desert. 
and the gunslinger followed. Okay. Man in black, where are you now? I think it was an attempt not to keep this down. To do a playthrough with no kill box. I think no kill box playthroughs are just... I've got to remember what I'm doing to play them effectively. I'm kind of just dancing right now. That's fine. Oh, they're kidnapping people. They're kidnapping a sighting who should leave. That's okay. Just kill the incendiary launcher. All right, move and move. Hey, he didn't get shot for once. That's great. Uh, Rin is pretty well damaged. Uh, Man in Black being aptly overwhelmed. Does not matter. Well, he had a good run. He had a good run. It was a fun playthrough. Uh, let's not mourn too much. Let's not mourn. Let's only smile for the good time we had. So this playthrough began way, 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 way over here. Way over here somewhere. I find it. I swear it's right over here somewhere. I wish there were I might have mod that would have it uh, pop out a bit more, but no, no luck. We got through the deserts. We got through here. We came up this way. We got over here. We took some boats across the ocean. It was a fun playthrough, all, all, all things considered, but everything good comes to an end, including this playthrough. We'll always remember the time when we almost got around the world, and then I uh, forgot how to play the game, so... That was fine. That was fine. That was fine. Cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do we do for the next few days then? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we do for the next few days then. This was definitely not in the plan. Um, We could turn back on the uh, various DLCs. Also, are you having this problem also, folks, that for whatever reason, none of my mods are downloading? I tried verifying cache. I tried uh, unloading and reloading. I tried unsubscribing and resubscribing. They're just not downloading. 30 by 30 challenge? Nah. 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 I think I'm probably going to start a new playthrough tomorrow. I think I'll say that's enough room for today. That's enough gaming for today. Hope you had a fun time. It was a lovely time hanging out with you all. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'll be back tomorrow with some more RimWorld getting ready, getting back in the swing of things ahead of the Anomaly DLC download on, not download, sorry, release on Thursday. Should be a good time. For now, though, goodbye, good thank you, and see you again real, real soon.